Good morning, afternoon, evening to you all from wherever you are. We are live from Zimbabwe. We, I think we better get started because we were scheduled to start at four. Sorry, yeah, at four, and it looks like we're almost 20 minutes in. May I request a couple of you guys to put your um, to, to mute um, so that we can we can we can get started. OK, all right. So um, for those that don't know me, my name is Shami I'm from Harare. And today we've invited um, um, Sasfin bankers to talk to us. You know, we've been experiencing a lot of challenges as far as um, making some payouts are concerned. Um, and like I mentioned earlier on in our group that um, we grew faster than we had anticipated and we completely ignored to risk mitigate against things like um, what's happening right now, late payment, late payments, um, underpayments, overpayments. Um, the other thing is we completely ignored the digitalization because we thought we had time. So now all we're doing is being done retrospectively to try and play catch up. So um, thank God, because Sasvin then came to our rescue. With us, there is uh, Miss Mveri, who's going to talk to us on different products that are going to be implemented under under ABOR. And then soon after that, uh, the web, our, our app developer is also going to talk to you about the functionalities of, of our app. So I guess right at the end, then we could we could ask um, the questions. Um, Ms. Mveri, can you hear me? If you can, yeah, if you can, I think take it up. Uh, we are slightly behind time, so oh. please go. Please go ahead. OK, great. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for giving me the opportunity to come and present. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a quick presentation, so I'll just share my screen quickly. Just let me know if anyone can just let me know once um, they can just see my screen. Yes, yes, we can see it here. Yeah. Yes, now visible. We can see it. Now we can see it. You can go ahead now, uh, Mr. Vero. We can see we can see the presentation now. It's on the screen. Go ahead. Okay, great. I don't know if everyone can hear me still. We, okay, you're loud and clear. Okay, brilliant. Okay, just to give you a quick background of who I am, um, my name is Pedzai Vero. I work for a company called Zimpe. Zimpe is a payments gateway company, and uh, what we basically do is we work with uh, creating payment solutions for different businesses. So businesses that struggle with payments um, across the world, um, that's what we specialize in. So we are stationed in South Africa. I'm actually sitting in the South Africa office in Johannesburg. We've also got a London office. We've got an India office and we've got a Zimbabwe office. So we've had a chance to look at, at Abwa and actually um, had a meeting with, with uh, one of our directors had a meeting with Dr. Shami in Cairo. And um, we decided to have a look at the business and to see sort of what can we implement to make it more a smoother transition um, that allows that payments become a lot easier, um, less painful. Um, I've been there a couple of times and I've seen a couple of the queues. I've seen people just standing around waiting, getting frustrated. It's quite a difficult process. And, and what we're trying to do here is to see that can we present an alternative solution that can be costly, that can be controlled and that can be effective uh, so that everybody can can have access to when they need to collect their money, when they need to deposit the money. And and that's sort of what we've 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 come up to do. I'll move on to the next part. So then after that, so I've just given you the background of what we do. So we enable access to financial products, payment services. That's what basically what we do. We also own a remittance business. So, for example, people in the UK, People in, in South Africa have the ability to pay directly Zesa, DSTV, school fees, um, Econet, all the big providers. Um, we actually uh, power that with our technology. And, and like I said, we are stationed around, around the key 
um, areas that we, we, we obviously do global remittances through. This is sort of what our app does. Um, it allows you from the UK to be able to pay all these different entities. South Africa is the same thing. And it's just one click. We try and make it as easy as possible so that it's as user friendly as possible for everybody. So what we've done with 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 ABBA is we try to, first of all, centralize all the treasury. And one of our partner banks is Sassman Bank that we work with. And what Sassman Bank has been able to do is to create a US dollar euro GBP account and a czar account that we're going to be using going forward. And ideally, what will then happen is that a lot of people who are paying would pay directly into that account. We would get a footprint of that and then ABBA would get that directly. And that will come in the form of a treasury bank account, which is what I said, the US dollar, the the euro and the the British pound that will work within that that area. And not only that, we'll be able to do card payments. So someone who wants to actually pay the investment within the card system, they can actually just go into the app that these guys are going to speak about straight after this and be able to actually just put in your card details, whether it's a debit card, credit card, be able just to do your investment from there. And it will hit directly into Apple's account, which allows for two very good things. So it gives you that convenience that you can actually do it even if you're on your cell phone or you're at home. It's quite an easy process. And it's. You've gone on mute. Yeah. I don't know how it keeps going on mute. I apologize. Thank you. Please let me know once it goes on mute. So just to go back, I was just explaining that the nice thing about it is with this is that you'll be able to do a credit card, debit card straight into that account. And it'd be a lot easier for you because you get that convenience and that ease of access to be able to just do your settlement instead of you always continuously sending money via your normal traditional Western unions and all that that charge you 12 percent. You get that 12 percent saving on that. And it's quite an easy process with that. Obviously, we brought in transactional accounts so that when we do the reversal payment for those who are obviously living offshore, if they decide that they want their money to be paid offshore and not be collected in Harare, it's now a lot easier because ideally we just use the same reversal and it will go and sit hit your your bank account from there. What we also want to do is want to create wallet services. So, for example, for those people who, let's say, for example, part of your money goes to pay bills, services, let's say your Zessa bills, a grocery for, 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 for Mama or whatever it is, it's quite easy. We'll create a wallet into that service, which will allow that even directly with the money that you get, you can directly pay for these services. Don't have to pay the 12% that it comes with. It's quite an easy process. And then the last model that we've come up with is obviously the card payments. This is quite great because obviously what we can do is we can give you a US dominated card supplied by Visa. All you can do is any of your recipients, you just give them the card, we load the card with that money. Then that person just goes to a local ATM, just goes, withdraws that money. Happy days. No issues of having to go stand in Abwa, wait for, 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 for your envelope or whichever way they settle it. And then all that convenience becomes quite easy because now you've got that ability to be able to just go to the ATM and cash. For those who don't feel comfortable with the ATM option, we've we've partnered with another bank that we use in Zimbabwe. We're just finalizing the final details. What would then happen is you'd get what we call a voucher. You just go to one of the branches or you go to one of your pick and pays or TM outlets, and then you can just collect your 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 investor amount back which is quite nice because what's that what's nice about that they've got a network around the country so it becomes easier for you for those who stay out of town don't have to then come and travel um, paying the cost of traveling into town to go collect your money you just have to go to your normal pick and pay present the voucher with your id and then you get your 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 money paid up there what's nice about that also is that Apple will be just able to just load that payment once and then everybody just gets their allocation like that Please stop me if you've got any questions so that if anything is not clear, so I can just explain it on that. And then I I'm did. I'm sorry, yes. you, have, you had gone off before when you were talking about the vouchers. Can you start again? Because it was some, um, it had completely cut off. Please. Okay, on the voucher system. Okay. So, so like we said, so what happens with the vouchers is that. What will then happen is that we've partnered with one of the banks in Zimbabwe. We are just trying to finalize the final steps of that transaction. Um, so what will then happen is that you'd get a voucher that would come onto your phone. 
register for the service. Once you register. Okay, so then what happens is that Agua will then give you a voucher. You'd sign up with your ID or passport. You'd then get your 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 account. Let's call it a sub account or a voucher account. What then happens is Abba would put that 250, let's say your amount is 250, onto that voucher system. You can then go to pick and pay, you can go to TM, go collect that money, happy days. Done, easy, clean, that's how it works. Or you can go to one of the bank branches to do that. So it's just up to your convenience. What's nice, they've got a countrywide network and it's a local, it's a local remittance, so it's quite quick and quite easy and you can pick it up at any time. So there's no need to have to then take the costs to have to go to Abba's office to collect your money. It's just a quick option on there. Okay. I've I'll got a question. Yes, go ahead, ma'am. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, when you pick up the voucher and take it to to spa or whatever you say, where okay. I can get cash, am I yeah. not forced to buy something and spend my money in there? Or do I no, have no, to get no, all my all. money? No, you can get all your money. Nothing. You don't have to spend anything in there. It's all your money. Okay. Yes, okay. it's all your money. Yeah. It's your option if you'd want to spend something on there, but ideally, it's all your money. You collect all your money. Thank you. Okay, I'll try just touch on a few things as as I go. So so you should catch the 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 gist of it as we go. Um, I did speak about the treasury accounts. I said it becomes a US dollar GBP and a euro account, which means that all those that are within those jurisdictions, it's quite easy for you now to just do a normal bank transfer into that one account and it becomes one settlement account. Um, like again, it's quite nice. It's a lot cheaper than what you'd obviously pay if you're paying um, your normal mukurus or remittances that you're paying into. So that's quite a nice feature that we can do. And the nice thing about that is all those who are international who want their money back internationally, this is quite an easy way. Um, it's quite it's quite clean and it's just a, a settlement back into that account. So like I said, we'll have the US dollar, GBP, Euro. It's quite easy. If you're international and you want your money sent internationally, it's quite cleaner. The money just sets, gets sent back into that account. And then it's 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 quite an easy 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 payment from there. Not too many issues with 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 that one. And then with the transactional account to be your normal ZA accounts, those will be settled offshore. For those who don't know, because it's a US dollar uh, Euro GBP account, the nice thing about it is non republic uh, reportable in the Republic of South Africa. So that makes it a lot easier for 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 remittances out. Um, this is sort of the wallet that we would like to introduce, like we did say. So the nice thing about this is you can actually, we could do a lot of things with this. We could actually put a lot of products for someone who maybe wants to buy local stuff with that money that they leave or want to buy grocery, wants to invest in something. It's quite easy. We can create this into the Abwa app and then it becomes a lot easier for people. If maybe, for example, some of that money goes to pay your, like your local groceries, your bill pay stuff, if you want to do it quite directly and don't, don't have to want to take that 12% charge or anything like that on there, this is quite a, uh, something that we could add onto, 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 onto the app that, that Abwa have developed. And then, um, like I said about the settlement domestically, the voucher system, the minimum is about $10. $10. I know we're going to pass that. Anyway, the maximum amount we can actually send is about $500. And uh, that's equivalent of about four thousand a month. Um, so, assuming for those people who have the 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 bigger payments, um, this should fall in line with everybody. If there is someone who's exceptional to that, then obviously we have to look at how we can move um, move that forward. And then the sender, which is going to be obviously Abwa, they will submit all the cash at the branch and set out all the all the amounts from there. Um, like I did explain that the recipients will collect from your normal, from either the bank that we select, or it's going to be your pick and pay outlets countrywide. Um, everything is carried on secure channels. It's quite convenient. Payments are remitted instantly, so it's absolutely instant. So if you know that today, let's say the 7th is the day that the payments will be done. 7th, everybody will get their money. There's a nationwide network, so all it is is just you get your SMS, boom, you go to your pick and pay, collect your 250, done. Not too, not too difficult, not too strenuous on that. 
All you need is the recipient, the reference number, and your copy of national ID or passport. That's all you need to collect. Quite simple, quite easy. Um, and then obviously, APA will send you the reference number for that. It's quite easy for you then to follow up. And it's also quite easy from an accounting perspective for APWA because at least they know that this person is receiving this amount. This is the recipient's number. Any issues there, it's just a matter of phoning APWA and then they can actually settle that query quite easily. Then you don't need to then have to go to the office. You don't need to have to then uh, find out what's going on with that. So at least it gives the communication quite easily and it also allows you to get your payments quite, quite spontaneously and also quite conveniently. Then we spoke about the Visa prepaid card. The Visa prepaid card, what we would do is we'd load the US dollars onto your card. You'd then be able to go to your normal ATMs that offer the US dollar option. Then you'd be able to, to, to withdraw that, withdraw your money there. Some you can use online if you want to use it online to pay for certain things. That's an option that's 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 there on that. Um, what we've done is we've included the voucher system and we've included the card because some people might not feel comfortable with a card, would rather have a voucher system where they hold the cash themselves. It's an option. Everybody, no one needs to be forced on this, but I think ideally it would be nice to, to, to people to choose what is more convenient for them. Some people may not understand the card system uh, or maybe in the town that they are, maybe they don't have an ATM, US dollar ATM. It's, it's quite possible. So that's why we've got the voucher system that's there. And then at least that becomes quite clean, quite easy. No need to stand in the queues. No need to send go, go or mama to go stand in the whole day while they wait for their payments. It's quite an easy process that you just go collect your money through the voucher or you get it on your, your card, go withdraw your card. Quite simple. And then one of the other things, um, I'm almost done with my presentation. Uh, but what we also want to look at is how can we then streamline this process to make it easier for you guys to actually sign your contracts, buy your bills, um, what can we do? And we're actually looking at ways in which we can introduce preference shares into this business so that what you're actually acquiring is actually a preference share within the business, which gives you a time period that you get a settlement depending on what the amount that that um, you're getting back, let's say it's a 25% coupon that you get back and then you get your principal amount on there. And I think what's nice about that is it gives us so many options because then we could actually list ABWA onto one of the exchanges and, and whether it be the Vicfall Stock Exchange, whether it be Joburg Stock Exchange, it gives us a lot of options where you can then boost that business even bigger so that it becomes an even uh, 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 a more sustainable business. So even when we are doing other projects for ABWA, it's quite easy to raise that finance quite quickly. Um, is part of the projects that we're exploring, that we're actually looking at, which is quite exciting. Um, and obviously look out for that sort of stuff. We will be continuously consulting starting next week to actually see what, what the intake is. But remember, at the end of the day, you as investors are the ones that are at the heart of all this. And the idea is to find things that make it easier for you guys, more convenient for you guys to be able to, to, to get the best out of your investments, to get the best information, get the best pay points that are destroyed and make it easier for you guys to get your most convenient amount of money, get it paid on time, get new contracts done on time. That's all that we want to try and fix within this process. I did speak about wallet services and I did explain that we want to create that wallet because that's what's nice about it. So if you need to order a product, you need to buy anything, it keeps the money within that cycle. And what's nice about that is then it gives a little bit more add-ons. Then we can add on different things like discounts. We can add all that onto your next. If you've got two, maybe two investments, maybe that gives you an option to get something back paid onto that. So it's sort of all the things that we can play with with where fin technology is going. And I really like that. And I think that's one of the things I got to give Dr. Shami, which is quite important, is to digitalize as much as possible. Less human error makes it a lot easier. And you can then bring in so many different products within this market, which allows then, then investors to get that opportunity to, 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 to have a worthwhile investment. Online services, like I did explain, want to bring a lot more online services, things like your Econet, Zessa, all that onto the wallet, which allows people then if you have to pay something that that you know that this I can pay, you can put that money directly onto your wallet, onto your card, and you can just pay it boom, 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 quite easy, quite quick. 
you know, it's it's all about how much innovation can we put into this so that we make that process easier for even the ones who are in diaspora who have to pay something within within the market. So it's all about how can we do that, but within the Abwa network um, that that's developing and growing. And obviously, we understand that this thing is going to grow. So it's about can we be there at this point where it's starting to grow and we can start to incorporate some of these services that will then allow it to to develop even more. I think that's pretty much my my presentation. I'm happy to take any questions um, on this. Um, yeah, that's where I'm at. Dr. Shami, I'll put it back to you. OK, okay. Um, you, you're free to um, ask questions um, regarding the presentation. Good morning. Um, this is Tracy from Canada. I wanted to find out how would we in the diaspora be able to get access to those credit cards if we want the option of getting it deposited into the credit cards? OK, so what you do is you just do an application, then obviously there would be a courier charge for that. So that's an option that we could we could give you to that. But ideally, what we would like to do is the one in Canada would like to then remit money back to you, um, uh, which is a lot easier than obviously you could deposit it where you'd like. But that could be an option that we could look at. Yeah. Ideally, we want no, it to no, no. decongest Zimbabwe. No, no, no. Well, I'm asking because some people might just want the money still in US uh, because if we get it here in Canada, we get it in Canadian. And then for me to buy it back into US, into my US account, it costs me more than. So yeah. oh, if okay. I have no. that option. OK, yeah, that that's option. an option. That we, yeah, that's an option we could do. Yeah, not a problem. We could actually do that for you. That's quite easy. It'll just have to be a courier cost, obviously, just to receive the card. But yeah. And, um, what's the maximum on the vouchers that one can can put on the vouchers? Because Sorry. some people, I guess, what's the maximum that you can put on the vouchers so someone can collect cash? Because Four, obviously five. some people. Are, it's about four thousand, yeah, four thousand dollars. I did put it in part of my presentation. It's four thousand dollars. Okay. Um, I've got a question. I had something about twelve percent charge, oh, maybe no. at some point twenty five percent charge, and I was wondering <laughs> what are these charging? Okay. Yeah. okay so what? I was describing. I was just describing that, for example, if you, for example, wanted to do an investment in your offshore and usually you will need to remit that money via your normal Western unions or, or Kurus and, 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 and they'll usually charge around 12%. Um, so I was saying that the nice thing about what we're going to do with the dollar accounts that we've opened offshore, the nice thing is that these become quite easy to invest in and you don't have to co cover that 12% cost is what I meant. So it's oh. all up to you. Yeah. Thank you for the clarification. Okay, um, uh, afternoon. I have a question pertaining to your offshore dollar accounts, are we yeah. able to use them for other tra transactions aside from the transaction? So can I store like foreign currency in that account regardless of whether I'm transferring it directly to Abwe at that point in time? Sorry, just say that again. Sorry, I, I, I had a bit of interference, sorry. It's okay. Um, about your foreign currency accounts that you will open with the Visa card, can we actually yeah. Um, store money in it. For yeah. example, I don't want to take out the money that I'm or I want to put in money of my own just to use it as an account. Is that okay? Yes, that's okay because it's a prepaid. So, okay, so it's a prepaid card, so you'll be able to put money into there if you really want to. So you okay. can put money in there because it's a prepaid card, so you have to be funded. So Abwa will be pre-funding it, but you've got the option if you want to pre-fund it or keep the money there. Uh, is, does the card, this card, can you log in and check your, your, your money? Uh, yes, you can. That's what we want to incorporate the wallet. Yes, you can. Right. So you can log in anytime, anywhere, where you are. Exactly. As long as you've got a good internet connection, man. Okay, can I ask you a question here, please? Yes. All right. I want to create a I want to create a scenario that could help, and probably this way, uh, somebody is in Canada, 
Yeah. And he or she doesn't have a US account. He has a Canadian account. Yeah. And he is he or she is taking eight nine thousand a month from Apple. How will the person be able to get the nine thousand in Canada? Remember, the background is that he or she doesn't have a USD account. Yes, 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 yes. So what I what I've I've just I, I apologize. I would like to apologize. I I got sort of I didn't understand that the Canadian market was quite a huge market. Um, it was only when I was actually looking through it last night that I realized Canada is quite a big market. So what we can actually do to make it quite easy for you guys, I think, would be to create a Canadian account, which is quite easy to do. And then would that okay. make it for you guys to then pay in Canadian dollars and then we return that investment back as Canadian dollars? Would that make it easier, even for the woman who asked earlier? Sure, that could make it easier for transferring money back to yeah. Zinc to Arbor, but the point remains when Canadians are trying to get back their money and they yeah. do not have a USD account, and you've already said that what you have is about 4,000, and I'm creating a scenario where somebody has up to eight to 9,000, how is the person going to be able to get that in Canadian? Okay, let me explain. So two things. If you are offshore, so if you're in Canada, ideally, we shouldn't give you the card. The card is the one with the 4,000. So ideally what I would like to do is that everyone who's coming from Canada should pay into the Canadian account and all the remit, all the money that they owed back from ABWA, they should actually get it back in Canadian dollars back to their... Okay, let me, let me just re-explain that. I hope everyone can hear me. Um, so what I'm saying is that what ideally we want to do is that for the ones in Canada, we would like to open a Canadian account. And what will then happen is that you would pay your money for ABWA into your Canadian account. And then any money that needs to be remitted back to you as, as, as your investment returns, you would get that back as Canadian dollars. You wouldn't need to have the card because the card is mainly we're targeting the ones who are local, who are having the problem of having to wait to get their cash um, at the ABWA branch. So you would not be affected because if your take is 9,000 Canadian dollars, we would pay back that nine thousand Canadian dollars back to your bank account. Does that apply to the United Kingdom as well? Yes, that will be exactly the same. That's why we also have a GBP account. Wonderful. Right. Let me let, let me put it another way. Uh -huh. uh, for for example, somebody who is in Cameroon who is taking five. Uh, okay, I'll put it this way. I was saying yeah. somebody is in Cameroon and yeah. he or she is taking five thousand Canadian. Uh, How is the person going to be able to get the money? Okay, sorry, just I you got cut off, so I didn't hear that. I, I, I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that again. Okay, somebody yeah. is in Cameroon. Somebody is in Cameroon, and he is taking five thousand USD from Abwa monthly. How is he going to be able to get that money in Cameroon? Hello. Um, <laughs> my question is, unless we would ideally want to pay that person in US dollars in Cameroon. But if that is not possible, because maybe it's the exchange rate or maybe it's the regulations there, then I um that will that I'll have to look with um with with ABWA to see how they're currently processing that process and if we can refine that. But if it's a bank account that we can settle in US dollars in Cameroon, that's ideally what we would like to do. So apparently anybody who is not in Zimbabwe and is not in Canada or using USD or Euro could create a USD account in their country and your company will be able to remit that money straight into their USD account. Is that exactly. correct? Yes, exactly. That's what we want to do. All right. So we should be proposing that everybody who doesn't have a USD account in the place right now should have it and that will make it a lot more easy for everybody. Exactly. So ideally, so what I'll do is I'll add more currencies to there, as many currencies as we can, um, so that at least it's easier for you if you're in a country that accepts US dollars or that accepts Canadian dollars or that accepts pounds or that accepts euros, then it's a lot easier for us to just settle so that you don't have to come up with that cost of changing or anything like that. It becomes quite streamlined. All right. <clears throat> One more thing before I leave you. Yes. You are saying that once you have a click, everybody gets the money. For instance, it's going to 
take away this period of one to seven days of getting the money. What you're saying apparently is that as soon as you do the click, everybody who is on ROI with ABWA gets their money. Is that correct? Yes. So let me explain this. So two things will happen. The ones that are international will be slightly different depending on how ABWA wants to settle that. The ones who will be, so the ones on the voucher system, it's purely just loading the money and clicking. Um, so they'll get the click and they can go and collect the time that they want to collect. The ones that are internationally will obviously do them on the same day. So obviously, depending on how your bank settles, um, you'd probably get it within the next 48 hours, 24 to 48 hours, depending on when the part of the world you are. All right. Thank you so much. Can I ask, can, can I ask yeah. a question? Thank you. Um, Hello. What about... Hello. Um, those who still want to pick up the cash, is that option still available? Um, okay, that option, I think you need to still talk to ABWA, but ideally what we want to do is to get as many people um, to be able to collect it at your own convenience. So you can go to your normal TM and just collect the money, um, which makes it easier for you to, in terms of everyone's close to some pick and pay somewhere. So, yes. so it should make it a lot easier for you not to then have to stand in the queues and have to send someone to 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 do that. Um, yes. That's ideally what we want to do, but I'm sure that option would still be available. I'm sure you'd have to speak to Abwa because it's not going to be an, a seamless rollout. Obviously, it's going to take some time for us to put this all together, and then obviously we will let you know once once the system is is, is fully functional. And Paddy, if Thank I you. could just add, up, uh, if I could I just add, up. Sorry. Go, go on, Doctor. Yeah, um, I was just I was just going to say uh, we're trying to streamline this because right now uh, one of the one of our major problems is to try and get someone to go and put some money at City Hopper bus to go and uh, send money through Western Union and all these other things. We're just adding options to what can be done. And also that limits the time and labor to try and do remittances within a week. So if 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 we could lodge it while we sit it in the office and then someone who's in Bulawayo could just go to pick and pay and then collect their money uh, rather than getting a person to go to City Hopper bus and try and send this money manually. Uh, so th that that's one of the uh, reasons why we are bringing this on board, because we, like I said, we're just trying to streamline. Yes, that option of cash collection will still be there, but these somehow decongest the offices as well because um, the numbers um, are folding by the day. So we really need to decongest. It's not safe for you. It's not safe for our staff. Um, so if you have access to these other outlets, wherever you are, you don't really need to leave Mount Darren and come to Harare to collect the cash. But the cash pickup is still optional. And um, you still need to, to, to make your appointments to come and pick up the cash. I, I have a question. Uh, what if I need someone from Zimbabwe to collect my money uh, for me? Do they need to have the card for the collection or for uh, those uh, places you mentioned? Okay, so ideally what should happen is that you would then register them to be the recipient and then they would get the pin to go collect the money. Correct. The same way we're doing it right now. Yeah. It's like this, this business is growing, which is a good thing. But could I, um, I hope I'm not going to be, it will sound like, like discriminatory. Um, I had this gentleman who was asking from Canada. He gave an example of Cameroon. Now, my question is, is this business uh, for everybody in the world or it is for Zimbabweans, irrespective of where they are. And if it is for anybody in the world, uh, what are your safeguarding measures for this business not to crash? Um, okay, let me let me just answer this. And then Dr. Shami, I think you can come back on the safeguarding. I think ideally what we're trying to do is 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 part of that, of, of what your concerns are. And that part is that is all about how can we make it uh, more universal. So how can we make it more accessible? So in terms of 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 allowing a situation where anybody from around the world using a different currency can actually settle into one account, 
with that with that denomination of currency and then from that denomination of currency it then settles you there then it becomes a lot more streamlined so it's easier for us to know what is coming and what is actually getting paid out um, from 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 that perspective and i think with what we're doing here is that we're allowing people who are outside of the country of zimbabwe to be able to access to have easier access and also easy access on their payouts coming back um, that's the ideal that we want to do and 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 remember we're not we're not we're we're trying to make sure that that this becomes easier and more convenient so people who live for example in cameron if you can't open a dollar account then we need to look at another way to 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 manage that situation um, so that the client gets it quite quickly our job and and what what our mandate is is to try to streamline this thing so that it's a lot easier so that people can actually pay and get your receipt instead of having to send the money to someone someone has to walk to the office then pay that get a receipt and all that internationally it's quite easy because all we know that we've got the swift from this person the money did clear into the account now we're actually doing the payment and we get that swift and it's quite an easy accounting process from there so so just to answer that by the steps that we're actually taking we're actually trying to make this thing more global so that it's actually there's more ease of access and and than what we were doing where someone has to actually go to an office get that 250 and and have to wait and then now you have to find ways in which to remit the money back to the different countries which also comes at quite a cost so ideally with this it limits the what the cost will be that's number one but also two it creates that easy one a uh, paper trail gives you that control and it's quite convenient. I don't know, Dr. Shami, do you want to just come into to that last part of that? To, to, to add on to her, her worries about um, about um, how how are we going to curb the business? So to just give you um, a, a bit of a background um, um, on, on Africa. So although we do have 60% of arable land, and as you know, arable is mainly agribusiness. Um, although we have 60% of arable land, Africa imports at least 80% of the food that we eat. So Arbo is just taking that portion, that, that, that quarter of a quadrant in the whole African continent to take the lead in the agribusiness. But what leads us is the, 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 the market itself. That's what speaks to us. Let me give you a very small example of the African, of the Zimbabwean market, dairy market. Pre-independence in 1980s, Zimbabwe was producing 262 million liters of milk per year, and the consumption then was just 60, 60 million. Uh, fast track 2022, 15 million people, we are producing 60 million. So we still have a 200 million liter deficit that we need to cover, and that's just Zimbabwe alone. We have sh food shortages in DRC. We have, in fact, we, we still, Africa is still um, importing um, powdered milk from China and these other uh, other countries. So what really um, leads us is the market. So we're listening um, strictly to the pulse of the market. That's what's going to tell us when to stop. And, um, you know, that's when we're going to say, OK, this is probably enough as far as dairy is concerned. And then we we'll look at, at, at the other arms of um, our agribusiness. So um, just in, in brief, that's that's what's leading us, um, you know, in, to figure out how exactly are we going to expand the business and when exactly we, we, we're stopping. Matter of fact, um, when I was in South Africa last week, we did discuss this with uh, with Pedzi, and um, we, we're going to put some fundamental measures in place and we'll be able to say, OK, this is our ceiling. We're stopping here. We're not going to take more people. But as it states, it's Africa Business you know, Association. So it's covering the whole of Africa. We're not we're, we're not going to uh, to to limit ourselves to Zimbabwe. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shami. Could I ask a question, I so, Dr. Shami? So, uh, yes, I've heard about the, 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 the money side, I was remitting it and you paying us back. So I just wanted to ask uh, on the operational side of things, uh, in terms of the products that uh, Abu is producing so far, how they are faring on the market. I've only seen them in the, in the at Abu offices. I'm not sure where they are selling in the other shops. 
where or how they are faring in terms of profitability, uh, in terms of sustainability yeah. of the business. How is that going so far? So that it gives us confidence that uh, we are investing in something that is sustainable and it's going uh, on. Thank so you. I'm, 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 I was hoping we're not going to discuss um, the product and just concentrate on the operation side of things. But now that you've asked this, let me let me um, answer you. As you know, the commissioning of uh, the dairy processing plant was only uh, on the 1st of June. So we do have other regulatory um, roles that we need to do. For instance, when the process of um, licensing or registering with ISO, um, so that we'll be able to do exports. We have um, started selling to other um, outlets as well, and we do have our own Abwa Mart um, outlets that we're going to be selling in. We were a little bit not quite hesitant, but we were we were cautious approaching the bigger um, supermarkets, mainly because of um, you know different regulatory payment models that we were considering whether that was going to sustain us or not. This is one of the reasons why we decided probably having our own mats was 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 a better option. But we are two months into um, our production at the moment. So we have started approaching uh, other third parties, um, affiliating with other third parties. Hopefully within a month or so we will be spread, you know, throughout Zimbabwe. But I was kind of hoping we'll concentrate on 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 these presentations. Maybe we might, now that you've started talking about this, we might need to then um come up with another meeting probably next 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 week or so where we can discuss uh the operation side of things. Um good afternoon. It's um thank you. I have a um, question to Dr. Shami before we move on to that one. Yeah. Uh, my, my question is because you tell, you've just talked about if I have a cash option, I need to make an appointment to come and get my cash. But I suppose if you really know that these, there's so many people who need, um, who've got a cash up, um, option, they don't have to make an appointment to get their money because at least you, you've got the days that they need their money. So when they get money, they can just come on the day without having to make an appointment. So I just okay. need you to clarify on that one. So... I don't know when last you were in our office, but the congestions were becoming very unbearable, number one. Number two, it has become too risky um, for people to queue you know, within the office, outside, outside the premises. Um, sometimes we're actually in other people's premises. So just to, 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 to let you know, this wasn't even our own um, initiative, but we had a meeting with other ABWA stakeholders, other ABWA investors who were in the offices frustrated, obviously, because of the keys and the congestions and, you know, everything else that was going on. So we decided to have a meeting. And it was actually the ABWA investors, and, and this was um, quite a, a, a diverse group of people, diaspora, Canada, um, Australia, UK, Zimbabweans, everyone was there. And they did mention that, A, we now need to have a grouping system, an appointment system whereby people will We'll, we'll, we'll book, say, for Monday, and then another second group, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know. And um, and then this the, 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 the next thing is appointments needed to be um, adhered to because now you had other people who are working and they, they decide, I'm going to just go during my lunchtime to go and pick up my envelope and go back to work. But they get in there and then someone is just coming or they've been sitting there without an appointment for the past two hours because those with appointments are being saved and they start, you know, making noise. Why are these people just coming in and going when I was sitting here? So there was a lot of infighting. So this basically was um, an agreed uh, solution by both sides, ABWA and at least a group of about 50 people, uh, 50 investors that were in the office. And uh, for those that have been attending to our offices this week, it was quite peaceful and, you know, less congested. Yes, we still have people that come in unannounced, but for your security, our staff security, we think we're going to be strict with the appointment system because as of now, it's working. 
Okay, thank you. Um, so one more, one last question is uh, about the appointment system itself, because we haven't been able to know what exactly what's going on. Um, is the appointment only by phone or online or WhatsApp? Or how do you make the appointment? Yes, it's being done by phone on WhatsApp. We have um, a specific line. Um, we're trying to 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 make sure that it's just one person who's manning to that line. As I think starting from Monday, one person manning that. I've got IT with me right now, and I understand they're gonna urge it on the app. I think soon after the um, app presentation, that's gonna be an option on the app as well, where you can just get in and check what slots are, are free, and then you can book yourself in. Hello. Okay, I would like to ask you a question. Uh, I'm from the United States. I just wanted to find out, I'm sure all this which has been discussed is based on people who are, who don't have uh, US dollar bank accounts. We are in the United States, we have US dollar bank accounts. So I would want to understand that uh, this bank that is coming in is going to act like a deposit bank, especially for us who are already in the United States, are we supposed to open another account or our accounts are they are okay for receiving or probably this bank, it will help us by depositing money and my receiving part will be just coming into my bank account from that bank. We don't need to bank. I mean, I don't need to open another account for me to, for, you know, for, for the transactions to, to go through. Uh, Okay. Uh, I don't uh, know if that, that that's yeah. what you're you're saying. Or oh, here in the United States, we've been depositing money where it is going, and it's remitted where it's supposed to go, and vice versa. Okay, so I think that's my question. Okay, um, what will then happen is you don't need to open a new bank account. All you have to do is go to your normal bank, actually remit the money. The money will come directly to Abwa's a bank account, the US dollar account. When they're actually remitting back your investment, they actually settle back to that same exact account. So you don't need to open any other bank account on there. Okay. Also okay. on the same issue, also... you know, with the United States, uh, you know, they have too many restrictions on, you know, these bank accounts when you're trying to do transfers. They 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 they, they scrutinize, they look at these bank accounts. There's a bit of some hitch when you are trying to transfer money from United States from a bank to another bank. So yes. I would want you to explain to me how easy is it going to be? Because as it is right now, for me to transfer my money from a certain bank to a certain bank in the United States, there are issues. Sometimes it doesn't go through. Sometimes you will wait for five days trying to see whether it's authentic because they are so, they, you know, with this, uh, they have their own way of dealing with money. Yes, um, I, I, I'm aware of that. So remember, that bank account is not sitting in the States. So you're actually doing an international remittance. So ideally with that, you shouldn't have too many issues because you're actually remitting the money to Africa. So ideally for those ones who have those sort of issues, it's quite easy. We can run a quick KYC with our corresponding bank in the States so that that becomes quite an easy process. We can We can help with that. That's not a problem. Okay, I've I hope been having be my hand raised. Hello. So I also have got a question. I'm here in Canada. Our money has been getting into our banks as Canadian dollar. So now with this, does it mean that now we can have our money in US dollar? I've okay. got a United States account. I, I, I mean a US account in Canada. Okay, so ideally it will be your choice of how you want to receive the money. Like I did apologize for those who did not hear me. Um, I, did, I didn't realize that there were quite a lot of customers from Canada, hence why I left that account out. But I'll add it on there. So those who want it to be paid in Canadian dollars will have the option of getting it in Canadian dollars. Those who want it in US dollars will get that option of getting it in US dollars. It's just up to your option. And just um, as a follow-up, so um, can, uh, I, can, I, can I hop in there? Um, I think we might need to create a page where all these banking questions are going to be sent to. The reason being we've spent an hour, I know we started very late, but we've got the, the app developer um, um, on the queue waiting to address us as well. So we're going to send 
that link for 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 you guys to send your questions and then Pedzi could respond to you. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. OK, all right. Um, just thank you, everybody. So I'll look forward to the questions and I'll answer how I can from the payment side and then I'll just leave everything to you. Thank you so much, Dr. Shami, and thank you everyone for listening. Thank you for your time. Um, Venon. Venon uh, sorry, I'm yes, uh, Pedzi, can I ask a question, please? Pedzi, sorry, can you hear me? He's logged out. Um, we, we're going oh, to send okay. a that link was where you're you, going to send the questions. That was meant for you. Mm -hmm. Yes, so uh, my question is this. Um, from your explanation regarding um, how the funds are going to be sent to your investors regarding how you remit the money to whoever's invested in Abwa. What I'm not getting is how does this alleviate the problem of what people have been having when they've come to your offices? Because the actual issue was there was times when people got there and there is no money. So what happens in that case? There was like a three tiered uh, process. For starters, we do have people that 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 are doing all this manually. At the same time, we we were working with agents that are in the UK, that are in Canada, that are in Australia to do remittances. All these were being sent manually to these people. We did not have any control over when exactly they're going to pay. And we have to give cash to those people. There were instances, in fact, um, more often than not, we have discovered that people have been double paid because they're coming to the office to pick up funds. At the same time, they are on the list, um, the, the UK list where agencies are paying them. Um, we've had instances, especially this August in particular, where Three quarters of diaspora traveled to Zimbabwe. A couple of them warned us. Majority did not. They turned up, they won their cash. I'm an investor, there's a funeral, I need to pick up my cash. We were not ready for this. We have a certain amount of, of cash that we get per day and that we've been um, cashing out to people. And now you have 300, 400 people um, that have just turned up. And mind you, some of that money has already been given to the agents. We even uh, struggling right now to try and get some of that money back because some people were paid there and they're saying I'm here. Oh, they've already collected. Some of them can't even get hold of them because they're now in the villages um, until they go back to England. That's when we're going to, to, to recuperate our money. So what we're trying to do right now is A, to eradicate the human era because that was the major issue. So once everything is in the system and it's loaded, it's with the bank, like Pedro said, it's just a click of the button. When we are adding addendums, we're just gonna put it in the system. And th that means there's no human interference. There's no human error where someone is underpaid, overpaid, um, or you know, there are double payments um, to, to England or at the same time in Zimbabwe, people just come and pick up cash. So we're trying to streamline this and digitalize everything. I think if you're in the group, you've seen that I've, I've also stated that from the first, uh, we, we're gonna have the auditing system taking place because we've realized quite a number you'd be so surprised they have been receiving double payments and they never let us know. A few of them come back and say, look, I've been paid by this agent and then that other agent paid me as well, but my person picked cash in Zimbabwe. So how do I rectify this? A few of them did that. So we're going to go back and look at the files and, and, and again, the payments with the agencies, what they've submitted to us and try and correct this. So our issue was number one, human error and timely um, uh, pickups of cash without any, any notes. Like right now, this whole week has been quite orderly because we know a certain number coming tomorrow. So we are ready for this particular certain number. We don't have to have surprises. We don't have to have people that are, you know, that, that have come from diaspora and say, this is what I want right now. We're putting systems in place. If they are coming to Zimbabwe and they need to pick up a certain amount of cash, it's already in their account in, in England. They can withdraw from there. 
or should they really uh, should they be desperate to to pick up the cash in Zimbabwe? Then we need at least a month's notice so that we include them in our already database, the Zimbabwean uh, cash pickup database. I see. All right. See that I if you're saying it's mainly human error, I get that. And uh, if the demand was higher than what you guys had expected, it, it makes sense. But then um, I think this question, the second question can apply to you as well. Ideally, it would be for Petsy, but then he mentioned something about a bank. And I noticed he didn't try. He didn't want to mention the name of this bank. Can we know what name, what bank this is? He that did you're going mention to we've even involved? circulated. He did mention, I'm sorry to talk over you. He did mention it from the beginning, even in our messages, we circulated that we're dealing with Sasfin Bank. Even the Treasury Bank account is Sasfin. So the Zimbabwean bank that will be dealing with is Sasfin. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, you're talking about uh, Zimbabwe's Bank ABC. Right. OK, so for further questions, I really um, regret that we really need to start with the app because um, these guys have been waiting and um, we started off very late. Um, Kundai is going to send the link for all the questions and then we, we can continue um, answering the questions. Venon, if you can hear me, can you please take it up? Hello, Dr. Sami. Yes, please it's take Terrence. it up. I'm, 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 oh, I'm standing okay. in for Venon. Thank you. Um, uh, a very good evening to, to those who are in Zimbabwe. And uh, good afternoon, good morning to wherever you are from across the world. Thank you for, for, for joining us. Uh, could the admin please allow me to share my screen? I don't know if you can see my screen. Yes, we can. Awesome. So, so uh, yes, my name is Terence, and uh, we, we, we are the guys who developed um, the application with the guidance, of course, of Dr. Shami and team and the Arbo team. Uh, this presentation is a very short presentation. I'll take you through what you're going to meet when you download the application. That's the user interface, the kind of pages that you're going to be interacting with. And I'll just take you through how to navigate the application um, and uh, partly with a few slides on, uh, on the website portal. Uh, please forget the date. Forgive us for the date and the name of the presenter. Um, but I'll go right through it. So... Um, the application, um, what we did uh, through, through, of course, the guidance and our brief was to develop the application which would be used across the world wherever you've got internet connection. And we have come up with this application. It's live on, um, on, our, on, on, on Google Play Store and on the App Store. So what we just wanted is to integrate uh, with, with what's happening all around your life. I mean, more people are living their lives more on their phones, on their laptops, in the digital age that we're currently in. So we didn't want uh, the Arbo investors to be left out. So you are able to do your investments on the application. You are able to, to, to do investments on the portal um, without necessarily going to the office uh, as what has been highlighted in the previous discussion. But what we'd want to, to try to do is to decongest and avoid the physical contact. I mean, if there's anything that COVID has taught us is that uh, we, we, can, we can do live our lives as much as we can um, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the digital space. So that was just the brief of um, what we wanted to do. So what the features of the app, what the app is able to do, uh, um, it allows you to be able to create an investing environment. So like I said, you can do your investments on the application. You are able to manage your investments on the application. You are able to manage the payouts on the application because it is able to then give you the schedule of your payments or the schedule of your payouts uh, for the duration of your investment. So, with integrations to the various banks and to the various financial services partners, we should be able to um, simply uh, put up an investment directly from, from either your account or from whichever platform. But then this also does not alleviate the ability for you to make an investment even physically. The application will have an option where you can say, I want to pay now or I want to pay later. And you can connect either via your PayPal and pay instantly into your, into your investment account. Or you can pay later if the cash is going to be deployed. At the, at, the, at the upper offices, but what you want is for you to be able to initiate the process of creating an investment, managing an investment, and also managing the payouts right from the palm of your hands. As you're touching, as you're interacting with your phone, or as you're interacting with your with your with your laptop, or you're doing your work, or whatever else you're doing, you should be able to run through your investments, add investments with the app with as much with the, with as much um, minimum human intervention as possible. 
So one of the one of the things that we 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 have included in the application is of course the Arbor Shop, which will list the products as we release them, whether it's eggs, sour milk, as we get into the various uh, business development value chains in the agricultural sector, we should be able to see more products. So you're able to buy uh, all of these products from across the world, whether you're in Canada, whether you whether you're in the UK, whether you're in the Americas, you should be able to buy for your loved ones who are in Zimbabwe or in the various Abwa, Abwa centers. So how do I how do I invest or how do I authenticate? Many of you, if you go onto your onto your onto your Google Play Store or your App Store, you should be able to see the Abwa uh, application. Uh, if you type ABWA, it will show with uh, with the Abwa logo. You should be able to make a download. The instructions are, um, are quite uh, clear. This is. Uh, the little picture you see there, we say sign in, is probably the first um, uh, interaction that you will have or the first page that you will interact with. So when you sign in, it will ask you for your username and your password. Many of you will not have the username and password. You'll be asked to register an account. If you do have your username and password, you simply log in with, with, with your username and password. Um, but you're also then able to register as a fresh user. So your friend, you can tell your friend, you share the app with them, they're able to register right from the onset without any physical papers. I'm going to move right along to more of the features. <clears throat> so if you, if, you, if you see on my, on my left, it should be your right. Um, we, we, we have the process of creating an account. So what you'll see there is your screen. It will ask you for your basic details, your name, your surname. It will ask you for... Um, um, your username that you're going to be using to log into your account. It will ask you for your email. We will send the notification. Um, I hope I'm, I'm zooming so that maybe you can see my font is a bit is a bit small there. Uh, you will confirm your password and voila, you're there. You're 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 registered. It will give you a registration um, successful registration notification, and then you can also proceed to log in. Uh, at the login page, you'll be asked to 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 use to to input the username that you have created yourself and the password. These are just the basic, and I've done this registration. It's one of the shortest registration forms I've ever had to fill uh, um, for, to open up an, an, an online account. So once you're signed into your account, you will be asked to, you click on the button which says get started right at the bottom of the page. You're going to enter your personal details so it'll ask you again for your name, the first name. This is now the application form that we use to fill at the Abo offices on behalf of the investors. So you, you'll ask for your address, your address one, address two, your city, uh, the country, there's a scroll down there, you'll be able to click on the country where you're currently residing in and your contact number uh, together with the court. Submit and continue. Um, it'll, take you to, it'll take you to this page which is an overview. Now uh, you are a registered member, you have, you have, you have done the, the, the payment via PayPal, we will require you to make a payment via PayPal. So once you click on submit your personal details, you will get another page which asks you to put in the details of your next of kin or the person who collects the, the, the dividends on your behalf, if it's a physical collection. Your next of kin details, you ask for their name, their surname, probably the identification details. Uh, for us to be able to make payment to them. There we've got payment option via either PayPal or credit card. Uh, so you can make your, your, your in, either your initial membership payment using your PayPal or credit card or your, your investment. You can then later on use your investment to, you can then use the same, the same platforms to make, to make your investment. Now on investing, we have an investments tab, uh, which is right at the top corner. Again, allow me to just zoom my screen. Um, So we have an investments tab. It 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 asks you for for your for your details. Uh, it is the number of slots um, which you are investing in. So you'll be asked initially to select the investment uh, uh, product. Are you dairy? Are you going to do dairy? Are you going to do cows? It will ask you for the number of slots right online. Now the beauty about it is the the once you it, the investment amount is is auto calculated by the system. So once you select either dairy, it will auto calculate or auto populate rather your 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 amount that you are that you're supposed to pay. If it's one slot, it will calculate for one slot. 
if it's three slots, it'll calculate automatically for three slots and you know the number that you, the, the amount that you're supposed to invest in. Again, you, you then be asked to choose your beneficiary or link your beneficiary to the investment, who is going to be the beneficiary for the for the dividend payout. We've got an option to use PayNow and uh, PayPal and your credit card to then make the, 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 the initial investment. Once you have made your investment, you will have your investment is paying with payments. If you haven't paid, if you choose to pay now, uh, choose PayPal or your credit card. If you pay now, you will get a, a success notification. Um, it it sounds like we've 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 lost Terry. Um, we're trying to see if we can get hold of him. Just one more addition: uh, the Sasvin Bank is now working with uh, with these app developers to plug in the payment gateway as well to this particular app. Um, let's see if we can bring him back. Terry, can you hear us? Terence. While we're waiting, I have a question. You know, you talked about uh, various options for you know new investments. What about reinvesting? Is that option there, or is it going to be there? Yes, it is there. And and once you've done that, there's also an option of your your contract is um, automatically generated. So you are able to um to to download it, sign, and then um send it to us for for the final signature. So I've got a question here. I've just downloaded the upper app, but it doesn't go any further than the you, you, you would need you would still need to sign in um, um, to do the registration, right? I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, it's connected. Okay. Uh, the app so that is on Play Store right now. We've locked the peg and so that people do not uh, interact with the system right now, because we have got data that we're working on at the back end. So we're gonna give you a time when you can sign in and uh, view your profile accounts. Okay, thank you. How about the oh. previous investments? The previous Would investments the are going app? to show up on the app. That's the data that I was that I was talking about that we're working on in the back end. So you're going to be able to view all the data from the previous investment that you've made uh, together with uh, the options for adding on to your investments. Hello, can you hear me? Sure. Yes, uh, Dr. Shami, I'd just like to know, I think my question initially when I asked at the beginning before you started to explain, it wasn't answered because I asked which Zimbabwean bank are we going to be dealing with? And the reason why I'm asking this is because there is very little confidence in our Zimbabwean banking system. And I think that's that's a very, very, that's something that we all know. So can we I know agree. what bank that is? I agree. Um, at, at the moment, as you know, we tried to introduce Stuart. A couple of you guys use Stuart. Uh, that they, they haven't had any issues. And um, the the um, Pedzi, they're working with uh, Bank ABC um, to try and. But then again, uh, like we are saying, all these are options. Um, if you don't feel comfortable using the bank, that's fine. If you don't feel com comfortable to win pick some funds at pick and pay or okay, that's still okay. You still have the option of coming straight to the office. We just widening up um, our options for Ambuya, who is in Mount Darren, who can't, um, who can't be uh, catching a, a bus coming to Arari every time. She can just go to pick and pay and pick up her money or walk into Bank APC and pick up your funds. So yeah, I, I appreciate your fears, uh, but like I said, we're just widening up the, the, the options. No, all right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank, um, thank, you. That, thank you. Terry, you are back. Terence. Okay, as Terence was presenting, I downloaded and, uh, and registered my account. I hope that doesn't affect uh, what the IT guy was talking about in terms of the data that was being done in the back end. I did create no, my account. Worry about it. It's, uh, no, it does it not. Um, thank you so much. Thank Terrence, you. are you back? 
I'm back, Doctor. I'm back. Please uh, continue. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm really glad I, ha I heard that someone has already downloaded and they've been able to do a successful registration on the application. It would be great to share their experience of how quick or how easy or the experience of their user interface. As soon as I'm done, I'm almost done. Uh, I'm left with just a few slides. But moving right along. Um, so on the application, you also then be able to see your payment history or your payout history um, right on the app without the, the, the physical receipts that you were previously getting from, from the office. Should you, however, need that, you can also have that maybe as your best up, uh, but you've got a history of how your investment or how your product has been performing and the dividends that you've been getting. So, for example, if you're on the ninth month, it will tell you that you've been able to, to, to do nine withdrawals or nine dividend payouts. Uh, you are left with X amount and there's a schedule that's attached to it uh, with the actual dates uh, for collection of your, your, your particular dividend or your particular payout. So it's got payout dates, it's got payouts amounts. That the the phase two of the um, the phase two of the app development, we should be able to put in some notification, some in-app notifications. We should be able to notify you that your 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 payout is due, uh, uh, maybe forty eight hours before, twenty four hours before, uh, depending on. Of course, uh, we we still remain guided uh, uh, by 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 Dr. Shami and the Abo team, but we should be able to have some in-app notifications, some uh, SMS notifications. You say your payout is due or your payout has been uh, collected. If you're not the one who's collecting the payout, the beneficiary successfully collected the payout, so that from your application you are able to see and have a full fully transparent uh, uh sort of like account statement of how your product and investments are performing so this is just um uh, an example of some of the screenshots of popular screenshots that you're going to bump into or that you're going to meet as you as you download and navigate the application uh, of course with the registration tabs where you'll get the notification of uh, a successful registration uh, the overview uh, I want to talk more about the the overview so the overview is more like your 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 dashboard it it, it tells you uh, it's got the investment uh, uh, tab on the overview you've got your payouts tab on the overview which um which are to me like some of the mo the two maybe biggest um, um, tabs of concern. You also have the shop there and about the shop on, on, on your overview. But with your investments, you want to be able to track your investments. You want to be able to track the slots of your investments. And the app does that for you in a very simplified manner. You've got five slots of this investment and you've got 10 slots of the other investment. And it's all right uh, at the palm of your hands for your convenience. And also the payouts of each particular investment is tied to either the beneficiary uh, or different beneficiaries, if you so wish, all at the palm of your hand. So what we simply wanted to achieve was to take away all the paperwork, to take away all the manual processes as much as we could, to integrate them in an application that's easy to use. It's a very simple app to use. It's a very simplistic, it's not as, it's not as complicated as uh, uh, maybe stock market applications. We wanted to simplify it so that anybody can use it. A child who's in high school can be able to use this app with no problems at all. So on behalf of the technical team, I want to thank you so much for your time. Uh, if there are any questions, I'm not too sure if you're going to be able to type them in the chat box or shoot directly with the coordination of uh, Dr. Sharma and the other team. Otherwise, Doctor, thank you so much um, for this time. Yes, we're just going to have a couple of minutes, probably five minutes for you to take to take um, on, on some of the questions. Um, they, I can see on the chat, um, area so many people are asking you know technical questions that you know very well i will never be able to answer them so if you could hang on that's all right doc i'm i'm here who's whose hand is up tapiwa um tapiwa could you please, your hand is up. Could you please ask, ask your question, Tapiwa? Um, outstanding payments. Should we expect them through the app or are they going to be made? When are they going to be made? Uh, outstanding. Thank you, thank you, Tapiwa, for that. Um, so what, what, so what, what, what usually happens when we, when we do crossover? 
we will we'll ask you to be a little bit patient with us. What we have shown you is the user interface, which is ready and which is which is live on on Google Play Store. Um, we'll have we'll have a, a, a period. Normally, it takes us about forty eight to seventy two hours, about two to three days, where we have a rollover of the of the data of all the manual data. We'll do the verification of the data, and then we'll have a rollover into into the. Um, into the into the application so sometimes we do it in phases we say day one or end of day one uh we have had this much information and it's now fully on the app so you'll be able to fully uh, see a fully functioning uh account that you have including outstanding payments i think it a day to be advised but it's not a lot because we're working uh day and night we miss we're mostly targeting to be done with the data rollover latest by maybe one september we want to input everything and then you should be able to have the outstanding payments on app but right now all the outstanding payments are still being recorded i think manually with the process that we've been using and once we're done uh through in-app messaging we should be able to let you know that we have finished the data crossover or the the the, the manual to to digital crossover therefore all the accounts should be up to date including all payments that have been made all payments that are still outstanding thank you and all for right. payments for this month which haven't been done i was told they're going to be done on monday or tuesday they still haven't been done when should we expect these as I'm speaking to you right now, I'm receiving some POPs. Um, the agents are doing them as we speak. So that's one of the reasons why we're desperate to get started um, on, on, on what we've just presented um, right now. So that, you know, we're, we're in control of what happens everywhere. Okay. And is there going to be a customer service that we can get in touch with if there are issues? Because when they're done manually, mm -hmm. When we try to get in touch with someone, they don't reply. So now that exactly it's online, exactly is there that is someone. Been, uh, Terence, I think she's talking about uh, the 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 active what do you call it the the chat room or something like that. Support on the app. On the app. Yes, we should we should um, we should be able to have a chat box on the application where you can log in queries um, and yes we've got support from the from the from the technical side we however will be working in close connection with the, with the our team because what we what we have is um, the back end access of the um, of the application so i'll give you an example so with regards to so say maybe you're saying uh, I made an investment on the application, but my account hasn't been credited. You are aware that there's a lot of there's a, there's 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 paper there's a paper leg that's involved, for example, uh, before the money reflects and so on and so forth. So what we'll do is we'll have a we'll have a chat box uh, where you can log in queries uh, on the application and also on the portal on the web portal. Uh, where you can log in the the the, the queries. The turnaround time should uh, because of the various time differences, the turnaround time. Will we will be as minimalistic as possible? There will definitely not be more than twenty four hours, but we should be able to resolve all technical issues. So suppose your app is not working in one country or the other, we should be able to get that uh, through uh, the providers of our servers. So yes, we will have uh, that platform uh, uh, on the digital uh, on the digital interface uh, of the application. Thank you. Okay. I see, I see a question. I see. I see a question. Sorry, Doc. I see a question on um, on Apple users. We 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 are currently not yet live on Apple. We are finalizing registration. Uh, you should be able to check maybe end of next week. We should be done with the registration of the application on on Apple iStore. Apple iStore not naturally take longer to register mobile applications than than Google Play Store. So we got the Google Play Store very quickly uh, last week. We made the application at the same time. We got the Google Play Store one very quickly. Uh, it didn't take us a long time, but Apple uh, being Apple, we 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 are still in the process of registering the application. I'm hoping by end of next week we should be done, and Apple users should be able to enjoy the same uh, the same convenience that Android users are using currently. Okay, I think we need to wrap up this as well, um, considering the time. Um, I, we we just like with the uh, with the, with the banking, we're going to create another page where you guys can send your questions, and Terence and team can interact with you and respond to to your questions. Um, 
I'm sorry, but um, we, we've gone past the, uh, the, the the time and being a Friday. Um, thank you so much, everyone who joined us today. And um, by, I think, how long is it going to take? 30 minutes? You're going to create those pages where you can send all your questions and you'll be attended to. Thank you.